Translation The third, that whoever is obedient to the messenger and singles out Allah with all worship upon Tawheed, then it is not permissible for him to have friendship and alliance with those who oppose Allah and his messenger, even if they are those most closely related to him. And the proof is the saying of Allah, the Most High. Surah Al-Mujadila, Chapter 58, Verse 22 You will not find a people who believe in Allah and the last day, loving those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, even if they are their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kinsfolk. Rather, Allah has decreed true faith for their hearts and strengthened them with proof, light and guidance from Him. And He will enter them into the gardens of paradise, beneath whose trees rivers will flow, and they will dwell therein forever. Allah is pleased with them and they with Him. They are the party of Allah. Indeed, the party of Allah are the successful. No, may Allah direct you to obedience to Him, that the true and straight religion, the way of Ibrahim, is that you worship Allah alone, making the religion purely and sincerely for Him. This is what Allah commanded all of the people with, and it was for this that He created them. Allah the Most High says in Surah ad dariyat chapter 51, verse 56, I did not create jinn and mankind except that they should worship me. And the meaning of worship, that is ibadah, here is to single Allah out with all worship, that is tawheed, and the greatest of all that Allah has commanded is Tawheed, which is to single out Allah with all worship. The most serious thing that he forbade is Shirk, which is to invoke others besides him, along with him. The proof is his saying, the Most High, Surah An-Nisa, Chapter 4, Verse 36. Worship Allah alone making all worship purely for Him, and do not associate anything in worship along with Him. So if it is said to you, what are the three principles which a person must know? Then say the servant's knowledge of his Lord and his religion, that is Deen, and his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The third matter which is obligatory for us to know is that of alliance and disassociation, that is, al wala wal bara. For example, alliance with the believers obedient to Allah and His Messenger, and enmity and disassociation from the unbelievers and those opposing Allah and His Messenger. So, this alliance and disassociation is a great principle emphasized in many texts. Allah, the Mighty and Majestic, says, Surah Ali Imran, Chapter 3, Verse 118. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا بطانة من دونكم لا يألونكم خبالا. O oh, you who believe, do not take as friends and protectors those outside your religions, since they will not spare any effort in trying to corrupt you. Then it says in Surah Al Maida, that is chapter five, verse fifty-seven. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا الذين اتخذوا دينكم هزوا ولعبا من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم والكفار أولياء واتقوا الله إن كنتم مؤمنين 
O you who believe, do not take as friends and protectors those who take your religion as mockery and fun. from amongst those who received the scripture before you nor from the idolaters and fear allah concerning this if you are truly believers then surah at-tauba chapter 9 verse 23 and 24 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattakhidhu aba'akum wa ikhwanakum awliya اولياء ان استحب الكفر على الايمان ومن يتولهم منكم فاولئك هم الظالمون قل ان كان اباؤكم وابناؤكم واخوانكم وازواجكم وعشيرتكم واموال اقترفتموها وتجاره وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين O oh, you who believe do not take as friends and protectors your fathers and your brothers if they choose unbelief to believe and whoever of you takes them as friends and protectors is one of the transgressors say o muhammad to those who choose to remain in the land of the idolaters and not to immigrate to the land of islam if your fathers your sons your brothers your wives your families the wealth which you have earned the trade which you fear you will lose and homes which please you are dearer to you than allah and his messenger and fighting jihad in his cause then wait until allah brings about his decree to see the retribution that awaits you and allah does not guide the disobedient then we find that allah says in surah al mumtahinna that is chapter 60 verse 4 qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi ibrahim wal ladina ma'ahu id qalu li qaumihim id qalu li qaumihim inna bura'u minkum wa mimma ta'buduna min dunillah كفرنا بكم وبدا بيننا وبينكم العداوة والبغضاء أبدا حتى تؤمنوا حتى تؤمنوا بالله وحده There is a fine example for you in Ibrahim and those with him when they said to the unbelieving people We are free of you and whatever idols you worship besides Allah and we deny and reject what you are upon and because of your disbelief in Allah and your worship of others besides him enmity and hatred has risen between us forever unless you believe truly in Allah and single him out and worship him alone this is because having friendship and alliance with and seeking to please one who opposes allah is a proof that the belief in allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his heart is indeed weak this is because it is against reason that a person can have love for anything that is an enemy to the one he truly loves alliance with the unbeliever means to help and assist them in unbelief and misguidance which they are upon and having love for them is shown by doing those things which will earn their love and friendship by any means without a doubt this shows that true belief that is iman is either totally absent or it is at least deficient rather the believer must be in a state of enmity with those who oppose allah and his messenger 
even if the person is the closest of relations to him he must have hatred for him and separate from him but this does not prevent him from sincerely advising him and calling him to the truth then the text says no now this is ilm and speech concerning knowledge that is ilm has preceded so there is no need to repeat it here then the text says may allah direct you the word used for this is a rushd and this means may allah direct you to uprightness upon the way of truth then the text says to obedience the word used for this is ta'a which means conformity with what is required by doing what is commanded to be done and avoiding what is forbidden then the text says to him that the true and straight religion and the word used for this in the arabic text is al hanafiya this means the religion which is free from shirk and founded upon purity and sincerity of intention for allah the mighty and majestic then next the text says the way al milla this means the way which he which ibrahim alayhi salam followed in religion ibrahim alayhi salam is chosen and a beloved friend which is khalil of the most merciful allah the mighty and majestic allah says in surah an-nisa chapter 4 verse 125 وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا and Allah made Ibrahim a chosen and beloved friend he is the father of prophets and his way is mentioned repeatedly so that it should be adhered to then worship worship or ibadah in its general sense is submitting oneself to allah with love and awe by doing that which he has ordered and avoiding that which he has forbidden in the manner laid down and prescribed by him as for the specific meaning of worship then shaykhul islam ibn taymiya rahimullah alay said ibada worship is a comprehensive term covering whatever allah loves and is pleased with both sayings and actions the apparent and the hidden such as fearing having awe prayer zakat fasting and other practices prescribed by islam the text then says sincerely for him the word used in the arabic text for this is al ikhlas this means to purify what is meant here is that the person by his worship intends and desires the face of allah the mighty and majestic and to reach the place where he bestows honor and favor that is paradise so the person does not worship anything along with him neither any angel brought near nor any prophet sent as a messenger allah the most high says in surah nahl chapter 16 verse 123 when we reveal to you o muhammad that you should follow the religion of ibrahim who was a muslim upon the true religion and was not one of those who worshiped idols and associated partners with allah then it says in surah al baqara chapter 2 verse 130 to 132 wa man yarghabu an millati ibrahim illa man safiha nafsah wa laqad istafaynahu fi dunya wa innahu fil akhirati laminas salihin 
إذ قال له ربه أسلم قال أسلمت لرب العالمين ووصى بها إبراهيم بنيه ويعقوب يا بني إن الله اصطفى لكم الدين يا بني إن الله اصطفى لكم الدين فلا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون And who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim except a fool ignorant of what benefits him and we indeed chose Ibrahim in this world and made him amongst the righteous in the hereafter when his lord said to him make your worship purely for me and submit obediently to me he said in response i submit obediently and make my worship purely for the lord of all creation then ibrahim enjoined this upon his sons and so did yaqub saying o my sons allah has chosen the religion of islam for you so do not abandon islam for as long as you live so that you die as muslims the text says with the true religion with the true religion which is to worship allah making all of the religion purely for him that is what what allah commanded all of creation with and it was for this he created them allah the most high says in surah al anbiya chapter 21 verse 25 wa ma arsalna min qablika min rasulin illa nuhi ilayhi annahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budun We did not send any messenger before you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam except that we revealed to him that none has the right to be worshiped except Allah so make all your worship purely for him Allah the mighty and majestic made clear in his book that mankind and jinns were only created for this Allah the most high says in surah ad-dariyat chapter 51 verse 56 wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudun i did not create jinn and mankind except that they should worship me The text says that the meaning of worship that is ibada here is to single Allah out with all worship this is tawhid meaning that tawhid is from the meaning of ibada that is true worship which is to make all of it purely for Allah the meaning of ibada has already preceded and also what it applies to and that it is more general than tawhid itself you should know that ibada is of two types number 1 the servitude of the creation that is ibada khawaniya which is submission to what allah has commanded and decreed in the creation and this is the submission that is common to all of the creation none of them being able to escape it allah the most high says in surah maryam chapter 19 verse 93 all the angels in the heavens and all men and jinn upon the earth will come to the most merciful on the day of judgment as submissive slaves this servitude covers the believers and the unbelievers the righteous and the wicked number 2 is worship and servitude as prescribed by the sharia and that is to obey and submit to the laws and commands of allah the most high and this is particular to those who are obedient to allah and who comply with that which the messengers came with allah the most high says surah al-furqan chapter 25 verse 63 
And the believing slaves of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth with calmness and humility. The first type of servitude is not something for which a servant is commended, since it is not due to any action of his own. However, he may be commended for giving thanks in times of ease and for having patience in times of trial, as opposed to the second type of servitude for which a person is commended. Then, Tawheed in the language is a verbal noun from the verb wahada and yuwahidu, meaning he unified something and made it one. Tawheed cannot be realized except through denial, that is nafi, and affirmation, that is ittibah. Denial of this ruling for everything other than that which is made, which it is made for, and affirmation of it for him. So we say a person's tawheed is not complete un- unless he bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. So he denies the right to be worshipped for everything besides Allah, the Most High, and he affirms that for Allah alone. In its technical sense, the author has defined it by saying, Tawheed is to single out Allah with all worship, meaning that you worship Allah alone and do not worship anything along with him. You do not worship any prophet sent by him nor any of his creation. Rather, you single him out with all worship, out of love, veneration, longing and awe. What the Sheikh Rahimullah is referring to is the Tawheed which the messengers were sent to establish and it is this that was violated by their people. There is a more general definition of Tawheed which is that it is singling out Allah, the most perfect, with all that is particular to him. Thus, Tawheed is of three types. Number one, Tawheed of Allah's Lordship, that is Tawheed ar rabubiya which is that Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the Most High, is singled out with creation, sovereignty and control of affairs. Allah, the mighty and majestic, says, Surah Az-Zumr, chapter 39, verse 62, Allah khaliq kulli shay'in. Allah is the creator of everything. Then it says in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 3. Is there any creator besides Allah providing you with provision from the heavens and the earth? Therefore, do not worship anything besides him, but worship him alone, since there is nothing that has the power to harm or benefit you besides him. Then Surah Al-Mulk, chapter 67, verse 1. Exalted is he in whose hand is dominion of everything and he is fully able to do all things. Then Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 54. Indeed, creation and the command are his. Exalted is Allah, the Lord of all the creation. Then number two, Tawheed of worship. Tawheed al uluhiya which is to single out Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the most high, with all worship, 
such that a person does not take anyone else besides Allah and worship him and do acts of devotion for him as he worships Allah and does acts of devotion for him. Number three, Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. Tawheed al-asma wa sifat which is that Allah, the one free of all imperfections and the Most High, is singled out with whatever names and attributes he has affirmed for himself in his book or upon the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this involves affirming whatever he has affirmed for himself and denying whatever he has denied from himself without changing and distorting their meaning, without denying or divesting Allah of his attributes, without delving into how they are, without declaring Allah to be like the creation. What the author is referring to here is Tawheed of worship and it was with regard to this that the mushriks went astray. Those whom the Prophet wasallam fought and whose blood, wealth, lands and homes he made lawful to be taken and whose women folk and children he took as captives. Most of the striving of the messengers with their people was with regard to this category of Tawheed. He, the Most High, says, Surah An-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 36. We sent a messenger to every nation, ordering that they should worship Allah alone. So worship is not correct except for Allah, the mighty and majestic. Whoever violates this Tawheed is a mushrik, an unbeliever, even if he affirms Tawheed of Lordship and Tawheed of Allah's names and attributes. So if it were to be the case that a man totally agreed to the Tawheed of Allah's Lordship and his names and attributes, but he went to a grave and directed worship to its occupant or offered a sacrifice as an offering that is nazar for him, then he would be a mushrik, an unbeliever, an inhibitant of hellfire forever. Allah the Most High says, Surah Al-Maida, Chapter 5, Verse 72. Indeed, whoever associates anything in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden paradise for him, and his abode will be the fire. And for the transgressors who worship others besides Allah, there will be no one to help and save them from Allah's punishment on the day of resurrection. Tawheed is the greatest commandment given by Allah since it is the foundation upon which the whole religion is built. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ began with it in his call to Allah and he ordered those who whom he sent out as callers to begin with it also. The most serious of all that Allah forbade is shirk. And this is because the greatest of all rights are the rights of Allah, the mighty and majestic. So if a person violates the rights of Allah, then he has violated the greatest of all rights, which is the Tawheed of Allah, the Mighty and Majestic. Allah, the Most High, says, Surah Luqman, Chapter 31, Verse 13. Shirk is the greatest transgression. Then Surah An-Nisa, Chapter 4, Verse 48. 
Whoever associates partners in worship along with Allah has invented a tremendous sin. Then Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 116. And whoever associates any partner in worship along with Allah, then he has strayed far from the correct way. Then Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 72. Indeed, whoever associates anything in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden paradise for him, and his abode will be the fire. And for the transgressors who worship others besides Allah, there will be no one to help and save them from Allah's punishment on the day of resurrection. Then Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 48. Allah does not forgive association of anything in worship with him, but he forgives what is lesser than shirk to whomever he pleases. The Prophet ﷺ said, the greatest sin is that you set up a rival to Allah when it is He who created you. And this is reported by Al-Bukhari, Hadith number 156. He وسلم, also said in the Hadith reported by Muslim from Jabir radiallahu anhu, Whoever meets Allah not associating anything in worship with him will enter paradise and whoever meets him associating anything in worship along with him will enter the fire. And this is from Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 168. The Prophet ﷺ further said, Whoever dies while still calling upon a rival to Allah will enter the fire. This is reported by Al-Bukhari, Hadith number 24. An evidence for Allah, the Most High's command that He alone should be worshipped and for His prohibition of shirk, the author Rahimullah quotes the saying of Allah, the Mighty and Majestic, Surah An-Nisa, Chapter 4, Verse 36. Worship Allah alone, making all worship purely for Him and do not associate anything in worship along with Him. So, He, the one free of all imperfections and the Most High, commanded that He alone be worshipped and He forbade shirk. So this order affirming worship for him alone means that one who does not worship Allah is a haughty and obstinate unbeliever, that is a kafir. And that one who worships Allah and worships others besides him as well is an unbeliever, kafir and a polytheist, that is a mushrik. And that one who worships Allah alone is a pure Muslim. Shirk is of two types. Greater shirk, shirkun akbar. And the lesser shirk, shirkun asqar. So the first type, major shirk, which is unrestricted shirk, termed as shirk in the sharia, which causes a person to leave the religion. The second type, lesser shirk, is every action or saying defined by the sharia as being shirk, but which does not take a person out of the religion. 
a person must be aware of shirk both major and lesser since allah the most high says surah an-nisa chapter 4 verse 48 inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha allah does not forgive association of anything in worship with him but he forgives what is lesser than shirk to whomever he pleases some of the scholars have said that this threat covers all shirk even lesser shirk principles or fundamentals that is usool are that upon which other things are built from this is the foundation of a wall asulul jidar and the trunk of a tree asulu shajara from which the branches spring allah the most high says surah ibrahim chapter 14 verse 24 alam tara kayfa darab allah mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyibatin asluha thabit asluha thabit wa far'uha fi do you not consider the example of a good word which is like a goodly tree its trunk is firmly rooted and its branches reach towards the sky now here in this verse good word refers to the testification that none has the right to be worshiped except allah the firmly rooted trunk refers to the testification that it is firmly rooted in the heart of the believer and the branches refer to the believer's actions which are raised up through that to the heavens the author rahimullah introduces this matter in the form of a question and this is so as to attract one's attention to its importance since it is of extreme importance and what he discusses are very great and fundamental principles he declared these three principles to be those which it is obligatory for a person to have knowledge of since they are the principles which the person will be asked about when he is buried in his grave after burial his companions will leave him and two angels will come to him and make him sit up and will ask him who is your lord what is your religion and who is your prophet as for the believer then he will reply my lord is allah my religion is islam and my prophet is muhammad but as for the doubter or the hypocrite then he will say ha ha i don't know i heard the people saying something so i said it also and this hadith is reported by bukhari hadith number 422 the text talks about knowledge knowledge of his lord this means knowledge and awareness of allah that comes about through various means from them is reflection and consideration of what he the mighty and majestic has created since that leads to awareness of him and his absolute sovereignty and perfect power and wisdom and also his mercy Allah the most high says surah al-araf chapter 7 verse 185 اولم ينظروا في ملكوت السماوات والارض وما خلق الله من شيء will those who deny our signs not look and consider allah's sovereignty over the heavens and the earth and whatever he has created therein then in surah saba 
chapter 34 verse 46 قل انما اعظكم بواحده ان تقوموا لله مثنى وفرادا ثم تتفكروا ما بصاحبكم من جنه i exhort you to one thing that you stand up sincerely and not merely following your desires in pairs and ask each other Have you ever known him to suffer from madness then that you reflect and consider individually the truth of his affair Then Surah Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 190 Inna fi khalqi as-samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafi al-layli wan nahari la ayatin li uli al-albab Indeed in the heavens and the earth and the alteration of the night and the day there are clear signs for people of understanding then surah yunus chapter 10 verse 6 Inna fi ikhtilafi al-layli wan nahari wa ma khalaqa Allah fi as-samawati wal ardi la ayat la ayat li qaumin yattaqun Indeed in the alteration of the day and the night and in what allah has created in the heavens and the earth there are clear signs for those who fear the punishment of allah then surah al baqara chapter 2 verse 164 indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alteration of the night and the day and the ships which sail upon the ocean with that which is of use to mankind and in the rain which allah sends down from the sky and with which he brings life to the earth after its death and creatures which he disperses throughout the earth and the changing state and direction of the winds and the clouds that proceed as they are commanded between the heavens and the earth there are indeed clear signs of the soul lordship of allah for people of sound intellect from the means by which a servant may know his lord is to consider the signs in his sharia which is the revelation which his messengers came with and the immense benefits contained therein which are such that the life of a person in this world and the hereafter cannot be preserved except through it so if a person considers this and reflects upon it and sees how it comprises knowledge and wisdom and sees how it is perfectly ordered and in full harmony with the needs of the people then this will lead him to know and to be aware of his lord the mighty and majestic as allah the mighty and majestic says surah an-nisa chapter 4 verse 82 افلا يتدبرون القران ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا will they not carefully consider the quran had it been from other than allah they would have found a great deal of contradiction in it also from these means is the knowledge and awareness of allah the one free of all imperfections and the most high which he the mighty and majestic places in the heart of the believer to the point that it is as if he were seeing his lord
the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when jibril asked him about ihsan which means striving to the utmost to do good he said it is that you worship allah as if you were seeing him and even though you do not see him then he certainly sees you this is reported by muslim hadith number 1 now knowledge of the second principle which is the religion which he is duty bound to act in accordance with and which comprises wisdom mercy and takes care of that which is necessary and beneficial for the creation and which wards off all corruption and evil then any one who truly considers the religion of islam carefully considering the book and the sunna will know for sure that it is the religion of truth and that the well-being of the servants cannot be attained except through it it is not fitting that we should judge islam according to what the people are upon today since the muslims have neglected many things and committed tremendous evils such that it is as if the person living in some islamic lands is not living in an islamic environment at all however the religion of islam and all praise and thanks are for allah the most high comprehends all benefit that we contained within the previous religions and excels them in its suitability for every time every place every nation the meaning of its being suitable for every time place and nation is that adherence to it is in no way conflicts with the well-being and benefit of the nation at any time or in any place rather in it lies the well-being and benefit of that nation it does not mean that islam is subservient to every time place and nation so the religion of islam commands every good and righteous action and forbids every evil action it commands every noble characteristic and prohibits every despicable characteristic then the text says knowledge of his prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the third principle which is that a person should have knowledge of his prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is achieved by studying the life history of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his worship his character and manners how he called to allah the mighty and majestic and how he fought jihad for his cause and the rest of the aspects of his sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life therefore every person who wishes to increase his knowledge upon his prophet and to increase his iman in him should read what he is able to about his life in times of war and times of peace in his times of difficulty and times of ease and in all his conditions <clears throat> then we ask allah the mighty and majestic that he makes us from those who follow and obey his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in those things which are hidden and those which are manifest and that he causes us to die upon that indeed he is the one rightfully asked for that and the one having full power to grant it